Hello and welcome to a stormy Friday night here on MC Sports. I'm Alex Ross alongside Benner Mullen bringing you tonight's game from the Pally Gym. The two teams featured tonight will be the visiting Los Gatos Eagles and the Palo Alto Vikings. First up is the girls varsity game followed by the boys. Hope you stick around for both. Benner, any thoughts on tonight's game? Well, I've seen these girls, this girls team for Pally play a couple times and they're a really good team. They mostly, last year they were almost entirely underclassmen and this year they're mostly juniors and sophomores so they should be good for the next few years and they've really had a phenomenal season so far, 18 and two. Most certainly, based on what I've saw, uh, seen last week against uh, the Wilcox Chargers, they're most certainly a pretty talented team. Although they were lucky to escape from that one as the uh, final score wasn't all that close. But the final score is not always an accurate representation of the game. Quite honestly, they probably got outplayed right up until the final five minutes of the game. And that cannot continue if they plan to beat a much better team such as Los Altos. Well, I think that maybe they, they probably just had an off night because they they do shoot they tend to shoot a lot of three pointers and I saw some of that game and they weren't they weren't hitting very well. So they 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 speak to the truth in that saying, live and die by the three pointer and we'll see if that plays out for them tonight here. Definitely that was the case. A couple players to watch out for tonight. Alexis Harris who was red hot yesterday, uh, pardon me, last Friday night before being taken out of the game due to foul trouble. But when she came back in, she continued her torrid ways. Uh, just seemed like she was sinking threes left and right and her defense was spectacular. Another player to potentially watch for would be Maddie Atwater. Another girl who had a very good week last week and is actually leading the team in three-point attempts. So we'll see how that goes tonight. Will they continue to shoot the three? And uh, now seems like the perfect time to go over the roster for this um, low set for this Eagles team. At number one, there's the freshman Jamie Keston, followed by number three Meg Enthoven, who is a junior. Number five, Funo Himes, who is a senior. Number thirteen, Katie Monroe, who is a junior. 15, at 15, Rachel Liu, the freshman. Number 20, Rachel Glein, a junior. 23, Allegra Maiso, a junior. At number 25, Millie Karp, a sophomore. Another sophomore right alongside her is number 24, Audrey Jones. And finally, rounding out the list at number 30 is the senior, Rebecca Andrews. It's a very young Los Altos team. It appears they only have one senior on their roster with a couple of freshmen and a couple of sophomores. So look for this team in a few years to maybe make a deep run in CCS. Absolutely. But one thing stands in their way tonight, and that is the Palo Alto Vikings, as their roster consists of number one, Carly Leong, number 12, Skylar Burris, number 21, Julie Chandler, number 22, Maddie Atwater, Number 23, Courtney Lovely. Number 24, Alexis Harris. Number 25, Lauren Koyama. Number 31, Sophie Frick. And rounding out the list, number 34, Maya Lathy. Several of these girls were huge factors last Friday. Most notably, Maddie Atwater, <clears throat> Alexis Harris, and Maya Lathy, who are really controlling the game. And although Lathy, in particular, didn't take a whole lot of shots, she most certainly was huge on defense for the Vikings, as it was arguably their defense that won them that game. Their offense was quite sloppy and committed a few poorly timed turnovers. And coming into this game, there's certainly a lot of pressure on the Vikings with the standings right now. It's true, undefeated in the league and almost undefeated overall currently on an eight game winning streak and the Vikings only one game above Mountain View in the in the Dianza League for the girls basketball. Mountain View's only loss coming to Palo Alto and Palo Alto knows that any slip up here late in the season could cost them a full league ten a championship that they want so badly and Mountain View is looking to make that happen next time they play them too. As you mentioned, the Dianza League standings at number one, Palo Alto's 8-0 in conference play. Closely f and 18 and two overall, with a win streak of eight games in a row. Closely followed by Mountain View at seven and one, with a 16 and four overall record, 
and a win streak of two. As we mentioned, that loss at Palo Alto. Just behind them, Los Gatos at four and three in league play, 13 and six overall with a win streak of one. And now a uh, word from our sponsor. And Pachi's began in the summer of 2004 in Palo Alto with an expert pizza maker with a passion for her fresh deep dish pizza and genuine hospitality. Today, Pachi's delicious pizza and signature customer experience is a neighborhood favorite. When you walk through the door of Pachi's, you're in for a treat. When you sit down at our table, you're family. Enjoy a Pachi's pizza today. Uh, trailing Saratoga is Gunn with three and five in league play and a terrible six and nine overall, also having lost two in a row. Just behind them, Los Altos, who are going to be seeing playing tonight with a two and five league win loss record and a five and 12 record overall. A win streak of one win, so actually riding a little bit of momentum into this one. And rounding out the list, the Wilcox Chargers, who uh, suffered a uh, fairly devastating loss here at Pally last week as uh, I would say, I could I, I could say that they let the Vikings off the hook. That was a game they should have won, but it got away from them late. At 0 and 8 in league with a 3 and 15 overall record and a losing streak of 10 games. That'll kill your momentum, won't it? <clears throat> Most certainly if there was any ever to begin with. And that looks like it will take us to the start of the first quarter. As you can see, number 24 there, Alexis Harris, certainly looking to be a big part in this one, especially on the defensive side. As we get ready for tip-off here on MC Sports. The Eagles are in blue and white tonight, while the Vikings are in white and green. And there appear to all of a sudden be a, uh, some technical difficulties as the scoreboard has just gone out. And the uh, folks at the scores table seem to be trying to confer and work things out. And the players are jogging back to their respective, respective benches. Wonder what's going on. Any thoughts? Well, I'll probably just uh, miss plug or something like that. I don't know. I'm sure they'll be able to figure it out quite soon. Given the skill of this technical team, that's probably not a bad assumption. As the shot clock has just come on, as has the scoreboard. Although the uh, two teams still remain at their benches. And the teams now take center court to get ready for the tip off, hopefully this time. So you can see in the background just coming on to the court are the Los Altos boys team and they will be playing following this game. For those of you who stick around, that'll sure to be a treat. Last time the Pally Vikings boys team played the Los Altos boys team, it ended on two free throws with no time left on the clock by Alex Dees to give the Vikings a one point victory. So sure to be another thriller later tonight. Absolutely, and there for the tip off is Alexis Harris and for the Eagles, Meg Ent Enthoven. And that pass is across the wing. Back to Atwater. And back to Harris. Harris with the pass. And that one's out to Lauren Koyama. Koyama misses the shot. <clears throat> and failing to put that one in is Skylar Burris. Some poor shooting right here by Pally as they're getting off his rebound after offensive rebound and, and just can't seem to convert. Burris hits it off the rim, but as usual, Alexis Harris takes care of business and cleans up for the Vikings. Now taking this one in deep for Los Altos is Audra Jones. I'll be interested to see how what Enthoven can get going here in this game as she's the league's leading the scorer back. and rebounder. The pass back to Jones and Jones sinks the three pointer. And the score goes to three to two, Los Altos leads. Pass back to Harris, Harris driving. And Harris gets the rebound off her own shot. That's just a great hustle play by Harris. She's always been a great competitor and just follows her shot every time. 
try to get that offensive rebound if it somehow rolls off the rim and is no good. And that shot by Harris is good for two, and she has also fouled on the play. And she, now she will uh, take her first shot of the evening from the free throw line. And Pally once again continues their great rebounding. I think that's all six of Pally's points by Harris in the first minute. All of Voss Evans rebounds too, I might add. And Alexis Harris certainly showing up strong as we might have suspected and carrying the ball. That's Allegra Maiso. And that pass is over to Funo Himes. And that three pointer is missed badly by Maiso. And both players come tumbling to the ground. And that will bring us to a stoppage in play. That is the first uh, team foul for the Vikings. Passed in to Allegra Maiso. Back to Jones. Back to Enthoven. And once again, badly missed by Maiso. And Alexis Harris in disbelief as Bringing that one in for Los Again. Altos to be Audrey Jones. Almost a disaster on that throw, and has almost got a backcourt violation, but. And big turnover, bringing it up for Pally. And with the nice breakaway and shot is Courtney Lovely, who was a large part of their effort last Friday night against Wilcox. And that one is just missed by Allegro Maiso, who's taken another sh another poor shot. Ooh. Another deep three attempted by Pally, and still yet to hit from down deep range. We can leave one to wonder whether they're going to be hitting tonight or not. And Skylar Burris, who just took a fall on her head, is going to head out alongside Courtney Lovely. Coming into the games for the Vikings are Julie Chandler and Lauren Koyama. That one is passed into Allegro Maiso. Back, and that one's to Jones. That one's to Himes. Maiso. And another very badly missed shot, this time by Glein. And back to Harris. Harris with the three-pointer. Looks good, but not to be. Carrying this one will be number 21, Julie Chandler. Pass off to Atwater, back to Harris. And Harris puts it through, and that will make this game 10 The Eagles are just unable to stop oh, Harris right now. She's, I think she has eight of Pally's 10 points, all on simple layups right under the basket with no real contest from anyone to try to stop her. Absolutely, and here's that Los Altos will call a timeout here. Probably a wise decision given the uh, way that Pally is starting to control the pace of this game. From looking at these stats, it seems like Los Altos needs to get Enthoven more involved in this game as she's been a presence all year for them, leading the league in, in points and boards. And they just they haven't gotten her the ball yet. No, she hasn't gotten any work in the around the basket or just in general. And the ball will be brought in by number 24, Audrey Jones. And to Maisto. Jones getting open on the wing. That one is back to Enthoven. Back to Jones. Back to Maisto. Back to Jones, and up with the shot, and another badly missed shot. That's gonna be their fourth airball three in a row. Maybe we need to get, they need to get something going on the inside. Maybe try to take the ball down the blocks and get some layups like Pally has been doing. Atwater with the pass. And a beautiful layup right there by Julie Chandler. Pally's certainly been doing well inside, and they haven't needed to be aggressive. Los Altos certainly needs to change that if they wanna change the way this game's gonna be played. And that one's brought up by Maiso. Pass back to Glein, and tipped by Maya Lathy. And on the breakaway, Carly Leong, and Leong with another layup. And that'll make the score of this one, 14 to three, the Vikings lead. This one's gonna be carried up by Maiso. 
And Miso passes up. That one's back to Anthoven. And Pally recovers. Great pass there. And just like that, Lathy misses the shot. But certainly uh, sh missing shots not a problem for Pally. And a beautiful three is sunk right there by uh, number 21, Julie Chandler. Leaving the game now is Maddie Outwater. Coming onto the game is Alexis Harris. Um, Lauren Koyama. And Courtney Lovely also heading, checking out of this one is going to be the aforementioned Chandler and number and number 25, Courtney Lovely. I feel like, I think Los Altos really needs to crack down on defense and try to play some, some tight man to man because they're nothing doing for them on defense. Palo Alto gets whatever they want when they want it. And another missed shot, this time rebounded by the hot Harris. And that one's passed off. And another three-pointer. That one looks good. But that's, just, that's just a silly foul by Lou. I mean, you can't, you can't come flying out of nowhere when someone's taking a three. You just got to gotta close out and try to prevent them from getting an easy shot. If you just fly in like that, it's always going to be a foul. And then three, free th three foul shots. Just comparing these two teams by looks, uh, Pally certainly looks bigger and stronger. And that's showed up tonight as they've got a 14-point lead and looking to build on that. And right through the net for Carly Leong. And Leong will be taking another. Beautiful shot by Leong, and it's 19-3. Pally leads by 16. Certainly a pretty large deficit this early on. Well, Salta just can't put the ball in the basket there. They must be... After their first make, they they must be like 0 for 8 by now, and they just they they're taking rush shots from far away from the basket. And Harris gets another one, but it looks like there was a foul on that play. That'll be the second team foul for the Vikings. Uh, the Eagles have committed one. Bringing this one in will be number 24, Audrey Jones. Jones passes it off to Lou. Lou back to Andrews. Back to Andrews. Andrews driving. Back to Lou. To Andrews. Andrews trying to bring it in and missed again. And once again, Alexis Harris with the play, but it goes out of bounds. If you're if you're on the if you're supporting Los Altos in this game, that's the kind of play you want to see from the Eagles tonight. Trying to drive in the lane and get a and a, get a closer shot than just a, a force three from. 20, 25 feet away, and I think if they continue that, they'll get they'll get some buckets quite soon. Certainly a fair assumption. And taking this one over will be Helms. That one is back to Andrews, and Enthoven misses another shot for Los Altos, and another one missed this time by. Number five, Funo Hines. And Palo Alto will make this one 21 to three. If now he keeps up at this rate, point lead. If the game keeps at this rate, it's, it's gonna be well over by the end of the quarter and probably won't even need to score in the last three quarters to win this one. I have to imagine this game will change though as, it, as um, Los Altos really can't play a whole lot worse than they have. We've got just under two minutes left in the first period. Uh, we'd just like to um, thank our sponsor, Pachi's Pizza. Pachi's began in the summer of 2004 in Palo Alto with an expert pizza maker with a passion for her fresh, deep dish pizza and genuine hospitality. Today, Pachi's delicious pizza and signature customer experience is a neighborhood favorite. When you walk through the door of Pachi's, you're in for a treat. When you sit down at our table, your family. Enjoy a Pachi's pizza today. And it'll go, and Los Altos will take a 20 point lead. Pardon me, Palo Alto will take a 20 point lead on Los Altos. One's past the Heinz. 
And Anthoven with the shot, denied. Anthoven really struggling to get herself going this game. I mean, she's had a couple looks and just hasn't been able to convert. I, I, I would expect her to make those, but at the way, I mean, they've only scored three points through seven minutes. I'm not really sure what less we could expect of them. Absolutely, that is the third, fourth team foul correction for the Vikings. Coming out of the game, that's number 23, Courtney Lovely. Coming on in, that is Maya Lathy. Pass back. Lathy with a little bit of poor defense there and another shot missed. What is going on? And Julie Chandler with the shot. Pardon me, Alexis Harris. And Harris makes us a 22-point game. Polly's really pushing the break, trying to get as many as they can quickly. I wouldn't be surprised if it gets to 30 at the end of the first quarter. Passed off. And shoddy defense there, but Pally once again will not pay. Quite honestly, the Palo Alto defense has not looked all that solid, but they've gotten away with it due to Los Altos' low shooting percentage today. There's another block that by one. Alexis Harris. She leads the league in blocks this year with two per game. So don't be surprised to see her get another one later tonight. And Harris tonight. misses one off the rim, one of her rare misses. And falling to the ground there is Mega Meg Anthoven. Probably a little bit of acting there as that wasn't that big of a fall, but it's enough to draw the foul. Bringing that one in is Audra Jones. So we have 15 seconds remaining in the period. I, I'm Alex Ross alongside Benner Mullen for those of you just joining us. And off the basket again. This has just been a disappointing game for Los Altos. As they had a uh, chance to really knock off a very, very skilled Vikings team. But they have... Um, just not capitalized on that opportunity. So they have look come to come out flat tonight. Although that's probably an understatement. That'll take us to the end of the first period. The score 25 to three. The Vikings lead the Eagles in what could probably call be called safely a blowout. And now for those of you just joining us, I'm Alex Ross alongside Benner Mullen here with MC Sports. Uh, we hope that you stay tuned as the second period of uh, this girls varsity game is coming up. Following this game is the boys varsity, which is also sure to be a good one. As you can see over there on the sideline, Coach Jacqueline Brode is talking it over with her players. Well, I think Coach has a lot to talk about to her players. Is They've really just been outplayed, out-hustled, out-skilled, and out anything you can imagine. Pally has done better than Los Altos this quarter, and by a lot, too. They need to they need to pick up the intensity and the effort by a large amounts here to try to get themselves back in this game and have a shot at making it a, a good game. Now a uh, word from our sponsor. And Pachi's began in the summer of 2004 in Palo Alto with an expert pizza maker with a passion for her fresh, deep dish pizza and genuine hospitality. Today, Pachi's delicious pizza and signature customer experience is a neighborhood favorite. When you walk through the door of Pachi's, you're in for a treat. When you sit down at our table, you're family. Enjoy a Pachi's pizza today. And for the first time in what seems like forever, Los Altos makes a shot. That was Rebecca Andrews for the Eagles on the shot and then Courtney Lovely just fires right back with a basket of her own and just erases all hope from Los Altos. And that one's passed to Audrey Jones. Out to Miso. Back to Andrews. Driven in by Himes. Back to, back to Andrews. To Jones. And Jones capitalizes for Los Altos' second straight made shot. So the score goes to 27-7. Just two quick baskets for the Eagles after only three in the first quarter. Their coach must have said something that really inspired them in that huddle because they're, they're playing with a lot more uh, effort and enthusiasm right now. Definitely. And Alexis Harris getting a little bit, pardon me, not Alexis Harris. And Courtney Lovely getting a little bit physical over there. But it looks like the foul will be called on 
Los Altos. Bringing that in for Palo Alto will be number 25, Lauren Koyama. Back to Koyama from Carly Leong. And that one's to Lovely. Back to Leong. To Harris. And Leong's gonna get that. And it's dished right out to Rebecca Andrews. And Los Altos continues. Andrews having herself a little game so far. First few minutes, got two buckets. And she, she's playing some good defense on Koyama, Pally's leading scorer for the season. Los Altos now only trailing by 18. Although, by no means a small mar margin. And now it appears that Los Altos' struggles are being passed over to Pally as Pally's getting the good opportunities and not capitalizing. And leaving the game is Courtney Lovely. Coming in is Skylar Burris. That one's passed in Rebecca Andrews. Andrews being closely guarded by Koyama. And Koyama's gonna get that. Koyama with the layoff, and it's good. That was a great play by Alexis Harris, using her length and size to get her arms up there and just bat the ball down and back to Koyama for and a layup. on that pass, Rebecca Andrews really showed off her strength as Harris is going to get that one. Will Harris be stopped without a foul? That remains to be seen. Rebecca Andrews calling for that one, and she gets it. Good defense being played there by Carly Leong, but not good enough. There's your second block by Harris. SWAT team came into Palo Alto tonight to make sure that one didn't go in the basket. And Alexis Harris makes an incredible play there, continuing her torrid ways. Bringing that in is Carly Leong, just trying to drive past the defense. And a great pass, and that foul was committed on Julie Chandler, and it'll be Chandler going up to the free throw line. That is the third team foul for the Eagles. Just under five minutes remaining in the second period. And drilling that one is Lauren Koyama. Now going up to the line is Julie Chandler. Harris checks out of the game. Chandler doesn't make it. And Skylar Burris put two Eagles on the ground there. Teammates seem to be congratulating her despite the foul. Uh, checking out of the game will be Julie Chandler. Putting on a jersey and coming in will be Sophie Frick. It appears that um, Palo Alto is putting in the uh, backup players and we're definitely starting to see a little bit of a uh, conceited look from the Eagles. I don't think Pally really has any backup players. For the five leading scorers in the league this year, four of them are Pally are on the Vikings and they really just spread the wealth between everyone and everyone gets in, everyone scores and everyone plays hard and they really just they play well as a team together. And Carly Leong will be bringing that one in. Maddie Atwater wide open. Atwater receives it. Sophie Frick, who just came into the game, puts that one in the basket. I think the call was a foul on the floor before the shot, so Pally will inbound the ball now, and no, no basket and free throws for Sophie Frick. Certainly unfortunate for the Vikings. And a great block there, as Leong's shot did not even fly, I would say, two feet over her head. And Atwater, the great three-point shooter, misses a three there. And bringing that across the court will be Rebecca Andrews. As interestingly enough, Los Altos really seems to be intent on driving the ball up the left side of the court. I've been intrigued by that pattern, but right there they go up the right side. Perhaps that's what's starting to throw Pally off. 
Skylar Burris with another foul. I've seen Skylar Burris play a lot, and she really plays physical and gets in foul trouble quite a bit from her aggressive play, but nothing wrong with that. Burris puts a, another eagle on the ground. And take and going up on the line here will be Meg Enthoven, who was a big part of Will of Los Altos's effort in the first period, if you could call it that. Enthoven drills that one. As that was the eighth team foul committed by the Vikings. Enthoven with the shot. And another beauty. And that one's passed to Atwater from Courtney Lovely. If the Eagles can get Enthoven going in this game, I say they can get back in this, but they gotta get, get they gotta get her involved. You can't just be drive and shoot, drive and shoot. They gotta they gotta move the ball around and try to get open looks for Enthoven in the block. And the Courtney block. Lovely takes that one out of bounds. And Atwater with the ball. We're certainly seeing a man defense from Los Altos here, and it appears they actually work him pretty well in the second part of this game. And Alexis Harris, a key factor for the Vikings, coming back into the game. Harris, who got into foul trouble last Friday night, has managed to stay away from it today. And that's certainly been beneficial to Pally as they've looked much stronger than they did uh, last week in the near upset against Wilcox. And that'll be a timeout taken by, it appears, Pally. Coach Scott Peters wants to talk it over with his team, make sure they know what to do. Maybe they're, oh, I see the timeout call. It's four seconds on the shot clock, wants to make sure they can get a quick shot and prevent the shot clock violation and another turnover. As you can see, uh, Coach Scott Peters uh, appears to be reading something as he speaks to his players. One can only guess as to what that might be. I think he, he might be drawing up a play to get a quick shot. Maybe a layup or open three for one of his players. I thought that would certainly make sense as the Vikings retake the court. And over for Los Altos, Coach Jacqueline Brode having a little talk with the referees about um, something. It would, be, it would appear to relate to the shot clock as the Los Altos coaches have repeatedly pointed to it during this conversation. And the coach is showing visible frustration. Passed in. And Courtney Lovely open on the right side as we see the pass set. And Atwater trying to be physical. That was just a block. I don't think Andrews moved her feet quick enough and Atwater drove, tried to drive baseline, and, and uh, Andrews impeded her, impeded her pathway, so they, they, got, they got her for a block on that. Definitely a big mistake there. That pass to Lauren Koyama. And Koyama driving at the outside, pass back, and... Alexis Harris with another big offensive rebound. She's got to have at least three or four tonight. That one, though, she couldn't put back for her own layup, but she gets it back here and puts it up. And Harris continuing her incredible rebounding. As mentioned before, Harris gets her own rebound and puts it back in for a layup. She's got to have at least 12 or 14 by now. And Los Altos going back to missing shots. That feels like they haven't taken any in the last couple minutes. And lovely, lovely with the shot. No, not to be. And Atwater shoved to the ground. Blue ball, blue. 
And the ball will be brought in by Los Altos. Interesting call there. I'm not sure if that was the right decision, however. Although we cannot say for sure unless we see a replay. We, otherwise, we must trust the referees as they do have the best view in the house. And the only view that actually matters. And Maiso with the shot, and Maiso misses another. And another missed shot, that time by Audrey Jones. Maiso hasn't been hitting very well tonight. She, she's missed her last few shots, and I think she's gonna try to get in close to the basket, maybe get a couple layups to get her touch up, or get warmed up, you know, get, a, get, her, get herself going. Interesting little fact here. Meg Enthoven leads this Los Altos team in both points per game and rebounds per game, and yet I wouldn't say we've seen a whole lot of either from her. I'd really like to see Enthoven have the ball in her hands a little bit more, as she's certainly got big potential. And that pass back to the wide open Leong, and a terrible, terrible shot. Leong takes the pass from the falling lovely. Back to Lathy. And Leong drills that one, 35-13. And the lead is back to 22. The widest, which is tied for the widest, which it's been today. I like to see Los Altos try to push the ball a little bit more. Maybe try to force some turnovers on Pally, as we have seen that Pally can be a little sloppy with the ball. And, and maybe Los Altos can then get some fast break layups. And another missed shot, this time by the aforementioned Enthoven. And another, and, and once again, another player falling to the ground down by the Pally basket. Wondering what's going on with this. Certainly a lot of physicality that hasn't uh, been called a foul. Speaking of fouls, the Vikings have committed eight, Eagles five. I think Pally is a very physical team and they like to make sure that their opponent knows who's boss when they're, when they're down low on the block trying to get rebounds and they're not afraid to shove you around a little bit. And that one is passed back. And that time the foul was committed. I believe the call is a travel. Travel, travel on Chandler. Interesting. I thought I saw a foul there by uh, Los Altos on Courtney Lovely. But I suppose there is no call. Once again, another situation where acting would have helped. That was Jones for three, and that was their first three since the first play of the game when they had the ball. And another two-pointer for Pallion, and the score goes 37-18 with just 30 seconds remaining in the second period. Pass back. Right around the outside. And Los Altos recovers the ball. As we mentioned, acting never hurts. Pretty large acting job right there. Well, refs are told not to call a flop if they see it, but I think, I think uh, all players will try to exaggerate a little foul to make sure they get the call. And it's just become a regular uh, normality in, in the game now. Definitely. As there appears to be, once again, a little bit of discussion between the referees and the scorers. I'm not sure what about. That was the ninth team foul committed by the Vikings. And Thoven at the line, shooting two. She had her first two, two points this game off of free throws as well. See if she can get these two in as well. And the shot is up. And beautiful shot by Enthoven. Coming into the game is Harris and Koyama. Checking on out is Maya Lacey. And Courtney Lovely. And another perfect free throw by Los Altos. And Atwater. Probably gonna try to kill the clock. No, going for the shot. Atwater's got it again. The pass back, the shot. And that will take us to the end of the second period. The score is 37 to 20.
the Vikings lead. Well, Pally has clearly dominated this first half, but Los Altos showed some positive signs in that second period, putting up 17 points and beating Pally in the second quarter. If they can continue that through the second half, this could get be a game if they can go on some, some runs. Absolutely. We have just under eight minutes till the second half of this one begins. Once again, I'm Alex Ross alongside Benner Bowen here on MC Sports, and we will be talking to you again in a few moments uh, just prior to the start of the second half. The second half of today's game between the Los Altos Eagles and the Palo Alto Vikings. This is the girls' game. The score is 37 to 20. Palo Alto leads, and it was a bit of dom dominating effort. Coming up after this will be the boys' game, so we hope you'll stick around. Well, in this second half, I think Los Altos really needs to crash the, the boards on offense and defense since. Pele has been getting every single rebound that they want. And if Los Altos, Los Altos need to prevent the second chance points and get back on defense as we just saw in that play. An easy layout for Coco Lovely. If Los Altos need, wants to get it going. They most certainly need to slow down Alexis Harris and her rebounding effort, which has been extraordinary tonight. And there's a third block for Harris. She's been a beast inside the paint, just blocking shots left and right. And there's Harris again. And both teams throughout the first, and Los, Al Los Altos throughout the first part of this game has been playing a man defense, whereas Pally appears to be playing more of his own. I think Pally is switching to the zone because they, are, they don't feel threatened by the outside shooting of Los Altos as they haven't really been able to hit anything. So they want to protect the middle and prevent Enthoven from catching fire and just destroying her man one-on-one -on -one every time. And both Harris and Allegra Maiso come tumbling to the ground there. This one's passed off to Maiso. Atwater will inbound it. They just go for the long law, which is a typical play by a lot of these teams. Just throw it out to half court and reset your offense to just try to get a better shot instead of running a play that will take time and not and work all the time. Carp passes that one back to Atwater. Pardon me, not Atwater. Koyama passes that to Burris. And now bringing that up is Courtney Lovely. And Lovely with, and Maiso with the shot, pardon me. And that one is no good. Maiso with the ball again. Back to Jones. To Enthoven. And that shot's no good as Harris once again comes up with the rebound. Los Altos is just getting torn up on the fast break points. Pally's just getting up and down the court, and Los Altos is not, is not tracking back to stop the fast break. That's, I think, three fast break layups in the first two minutes of the second half that Pally has already gotten against Los Altos. And we forgot to mention, but this 25-point lead that is currently possessed by the Vikings is the largest of the game. And that is a timeout presumably called by Los Altos as Pally seems to have resumed the dominance that we saw in the first period. I think Los Altos coach just wants to talk it over, hopefully tell her players to get back on defense as they've really not been doing that very well and just allowing Pally to just do whatever they want. I'd be interested to see if Los Altos switches, his, switches to the zone here as the man has not been all that effective against Pally. I wouldn't be surprised if they come out with a press, a full court press, try to get some, some quick turnovers and easy layups and try to shrink this lead down to under 20, maybe under 15 and get themselves back into this game since there's really been no, no contest or uh, uh, competition from Los Altos so far this game. It's just been Pally can 
do whatever they want and just get away with it. Definitely, Palo Alto's gotten away with mistakes while Los Altos has not. That's what separates a good team from a great team. All teams make mistakes. The difference is can you get away with them? There's another turnover from the Eagles. The sloppy play is just killing them right now. We'll see if Pally can make do of that mistake. And that shot right there is missed by Julie Chandler. And again, lovely on the offensive boards. Pally just crashes. Los Altos watches them go crash the boards. And another second chance basket for the Vikings. And this shot is going to be taken. And Andrews is calling for the ball, but she does not get it. Instead, it goes to Keston. And that one is passed to Lou. Back to Lathy. Lathy misses the shot. And Jones passes it up. This one will be taken by Andrews. And that one's passed. Back to Andrews. To Jones. Jones with a shot that doesn't look all that convincing. Good effort by Enthoven on that play to try to get the offensive board. Even though she came up short, I like the I like the pursuit of the ball, trying to get second chance point for the for the Eagles. And the Eagles will continue to try to play with a slower paced offense from what we've seen from the Vikings. Certainly taking their time as there is some great defense there by Courtney Lovely, but the pass is gotten off. And Carly Leong's gonna charge up there, but no good. I've been really surprised that Los Altos hasn't really tried to push the pace and run it and gun it, or run the break against the Vikings as the slow offense, slowing it down every time, taking out top, and just trying to get a good shot has not worked for them whatsoever, as they, they, they really can't put any ports on the board. Yes, and that shot is missed by Julie Chandler. Pass back. Across the wing. And drive in that one is Meg Anthoven. But unfortunately, she just can't get a good shot off as that one goes off the rim. And that one is pass back for Pally. Shot clock winding down for the Vikings. Only about eight seconds left. They're gonna have to try to get one off quick. And lovely, it appears, has drawn. Los Altos just bailed them out on that play. I mean, you got them down to seven seconds on the shot clock. Try to play some tough D and force a turnover or a bad shot. Don't just bail them out with a, with a cheap hand check foul. Certainly, that has been a problem for Los Altos today. Although they have not committed nearly as many fouls as the Vikings, they've been very ill-timed much like almost everything we've seen from Los Altos tonight. <laughs> and that one's passed back. And Leong with the shot, no good off the rim. And Leong will go to the line. That one is perfect. And the score is 49 to 20. A 29 point lead encroaching on 30 here with just under three minutes left to go in the third period. Driving this one is Julie Chandler. And Leong with the shot, no good. There's a foul on the floor called against the Eagles. Pally's just been slowly just Increasing their lead by two, four points every minute now, and it's it's it was only about 18, I believe, at halftime, and now they've just been slowly chipping away, and now it's almost up to 30 points. Let's pass back to Harris, and driving, and the shot clock hits 20, and. Late Fans here for the for the Eagles are trying to get some momentum for their players going. They're starting to try to get them riled up, some chants and some cheers. And 
And some physical D here being played by the Vikings, and it pays off. Alexis Harris le lays off that one and leaves it to Chandler. That'll take us to a stoppage in play. Substitution for both the Eagles and Vikings. Checking into this one will be Skylar Burris, who got in some foul trouble a little bit earlier, presumably while she was taken out. Burris has really got to try to play some clean basketball here. Although she is physical, there's a certain point where you are too physical. That one back to Harris. Harris to the shot. Good defensive rebounding there by the Eagles to box out, get the ball back, and not allow for a second chance, second chance opportunity for the Vikings. And that one is attempted to be driven, but no good. And with that one. And the shot up by Rachel Liu is no good. I Bringing that one in for Palo Alto will be Lauren Koyama. I believe that it was a travel was called. She took a couple steps before she dribbled the ball, and that'll do it for you in basketball. Unless you're in the NBA, of course. I'll let you take as many steps as you want. Koyama passes. And back to Harris. Dribbled it off her foot, and Meisel will recover that one and bring it down the court for the Eagles. And Lovely just goes right through defenders there. And now with that one is Koyama passed off. And the shot by Harris is good. And this lead of 29 will be restored. I expect the Vikings to slow it down here in the, in the, in the fourth quarter as there's really no need for them to pile it on anymore. The, the victory has pretty much been assured by now, as long, assuming that the Eagles don't get insanely hot from the three-point line and just, and just make three after three after three. Definitely, and with that one is Maya Lathy. Lathy passes, and Koyama trying to assess her best option, and Koyama passes it off. With that one is Maya Lathy, but no, Lathy turns it over to Andrews. Andrews bring it around the outside of the arc. Andrews not a, and that shot by Jones is no good. Not a bad look for them at the end of that quarter. I, I'd like to see them do more of that, try to get some more threes up. That'll bring us to the end of the third period. The score is 51-22. Los Altos lead, uh, is trailing Pally. And now a uh, word from our sponsor. And Pachi's began in the summer of 2004 in Palo Alto with an expert pizza maker with a passion for her fresh deep dish pizza and genuine hospitality. Today, Pachi's delicious pizza and signature customer experience is a neighborhood favorite. When you walk through the door of Pachi's, you're in for a treat. When you sit down at our table, you're family. Enjoy a Pachi's pizza today. That one is passed off to Miso. And Millie Karp will miss that one. This will be rebounded by Julie Chandler. Chandler at the pass. And a travel is called. I'm not sure what the call was on that. Seems like she fumbled the ball, didn't really ever have a control of it, and then right when she got it, she passed it away. I'm not sure why that was a travel. Definitely a questionable call there, but can't really question the referee unless you see it with your own eyes, and they've got the best view in the house. That one's passed back. Off to Andrews. Andrews passed it back. 
And Allegra Maiso with that one. Good Alexis to see Harris. the Eagles crashing the offensive boards. Although Harris came out, out with it for the Vikings, two Eagles were there trying to snatch it away from her. Getting ready to come in the game for Los Altos is Funo Himes. That one is good, and the score is 53 to 22. That extends the lead for the Vikings to over 30 points. I think that's the first time they've been up by 30 this game, and it doesn't look like they're looking back at this point. Definitely not, and neither would I. And I think that's safe to say that this game is probably as good as done. But you never know, as there are still over six minutes remaining on the clock. But that one will be grabbed by Chandler. Chandler the pass to Harris. Harris over the middle. Surprise, Pally isn't trying to slow the pace down, just take time off the clock. But it seems like they still want to push the pace and get as many buckets as they can. As they're only using like five, six, seven so seconds on the shot clock every time they get the ball. Definitely, and that one is passed over to Alexis Harris. Harris drives it inside. And that one we brought back outside the arc, and here they go. That one is passed over to Audrey Jones. Jones passes it back to Funo Himes. Taking this one is Rachel Luba, no good. And a great job keeping that one in by Rachel Glein, even after she was hit by Julie Chandler. And a beautiful basket made by Carly Young in a very quick sequence of events. Pally's lead just keeps growing as the time just ticks away, and then Los Altos is really not showing us anything here. Absolutely, and this one will be passed over to Rachel Glein. Glein passed it back. And the shot is no good by Millie Carp. This one be carried up the wing by Julie Chandler. Pa passed by Chandler. Grabbed by Leong. And Leong Maybe, I don't know. just going to dump it off to Chandler. And Chandler puts that one through. That's just poor defense by Los Altos. They really haven't showed us anything. No intensity, no effort. They just, they just want Pally to score more baskets. They've come out flat. And that's passed back to Funo Himes. Over to Carp. And that one is good from Glein. Eagles fouling on the board here in the fourth quarter. A little too late, though, I would imagine. Yeah, so certainly too little too late as the lead is now been extended to 25. 35, I believe that is, actually. 35, pardon me. It's passed off. Back to Rachel Glein. And Audrey Jones gonna try to get physical. Alexis Harris with the ball. Harris gonna take it inside. Use her muscle power to put that one through when the score goes 61 to 24. Just under four minutes left to play. That will bring us to a timeout by Los Altos. For those of you just joining us, I'm Alex Ross alongside Benner Mullen here with MC Sports live from the Pally Gym. Uh, this is the first game of a doubleheader as this is the uh, girls varsity game between the Los Altos Eagles and the Palo Alto Vikings. Uh, coming up just after this will be the boys varsity game between the Los Altos Eagles and home team Palo Alto Vikings. The score of this game, 61 to 24, and what has certainly been a blowout as there are just under four minutes left on the clock. This period has arguably been even more lopsided than the past as there have been four team fouls committed by the Eagles and none by the Vikings. At this point, it's all just salt in the wound for Los Altos. Pally just piles it on and Los Altos just watches it happen. And now a uh, word from our sponsor. And pot.
Hachi's began in the summer of 2004 in Palo Alto with an expert pizza maker with a passion for her fresh, deep dish pizza and genuine hospitality. Today, Pachi's delicious pizza and signature customer experience is a neighborhood favorite. When you walk through the door of Pachi's, you're in for a treat. When you sit down at our table, you're family. Enjoy a Pachi's pizza today. And almost a handoff there to Courtney Lovely. And another handoff like pass to Carly Leong. Ah, lovely to Atwater. Atwater driving. Atwater dishes it out right to Meg Enthoven, who has certainly been a disappointment tonight. I think Los Altos got a, a <laughs> piece of that ball that deflected it to uh, Enthoven. And another underthrown ball, this time by Millie Karp. Los Altos grabs the offensive rebound, which comes as a surprise to me. Might be their first one all game, but good to see even the last stages of this game. And that one's to Atwater. As, as expected, we're starting to see a, a little bit looser defense by Los Altos here. And another one of those handoff type passes to Courtney Lovely. Lovely bringing it outside. Passed outside the arc to Alexis Harris. Pardon me, not Harris. To Koyama. And Koyama will bring it under the net. But it will go out. This one will be carried by Courtney Lovely. Lovely with the pass. Pardon me, that was not Courtney Lovely carrying that one. That was rather Allegra Maiso of the Eagles. Now bringing this one in will be Megan Thoven. Enthoven has all her points off of free throws tonight. No field goals. Probably 0 of 2 or 0 of 3 from the field, but now 4 of 5 from the line. That was really just a subpar day for everyone on uh, Los Altos tonight. And Enthoven, who's arguably the best player on this court, has certainly disappointed. Whereas uh, another player we were really watching on the Pally side, Alexis Harris, has certainly not disappointed. This shot will be taken by Enthoven. Enthoven off the rim, no good. And it's carried along the outside this time by Maya Lathy. And the shot taken by Courtney Lovely, no good. This one rebounded by Meg Enthoven. And Allegra Maiso gonna try to beat her man. And Carly Leong. That one, no good, and it's rebounded by Courtney Lovely. And Pally will continue. This one taken by Sophie Frick. And drop into the ground there, Meg Enthoven. So we have just over a buck 30 left to play here. This game draws to a close. Hopefully we'll see a little more of a contest between the Los Altos boys and the Pally boys. Hopefully a more exciting, more competitive game, as I, I would expect, as Los Altos and Pally are both very good teams. And Pally, this will give them their third straight win since a loss against Piedmont Hills. Pardon me, a loss against Homestead. That was uh, certainly a shocking game here a couple weeks ago as uh, the Vikings got upset here on home court. Next on tap for the Vikings after this Los Altos game is a game against Crosstown rival Gunn tomorrow night at 7.45. Be sure to tune into the MC Sports presentation of the Gun of the Pally Gun varsity games. Is they're sure to be uh, an exciting game as the rivalry games always are for these two schools. Most certainly.
Los Otos finally firing away some three-pointers here in the fourth quarter, none of which have gone in. But it's good to see them trying to shorten the lead quicker, although it has failed pretty much every single time. And after this game, Los Altos should drop to two and six on the season in league play with an overall record of five and 13. However, uh, despite how bad they do the rest of the season, it's hard to imagine that they will uh, be passed up by Wilcox, who has really been struggling this year. This one to the shot. And a perfect one from Maya Lathy. And we have just under a minute left to go here. Looks like they'll run the clock here. No, no point in stopping uh, in the game with 45 seconds left. I'm up by 40. That'll bring us to a stoppage in play. Over there, talking it over with his team is Coach Scott Peters. Uh, clearly not draw anything up this time. Uh, probably just telling his girls, nice job. Uh, just hang on and uh, beware of miracles. Scott Peters really did a phenomenal job with this girls varsity team. They've been really good for the last few years, especially considering all the young talent they have. They should continue to, to dominate the league for the next year or two as they really have put on a show the last few games. Definitely, and that will bring us to the end of this timeout as both teams will retake the court and mark up on their man. Bring this one in will be Maya Lathy. Lathy pass it in to Frick. Frick no good on the shot. And this one carried by Courtney Lovely. Lovely uh, bobbles it there. Pardon me, not Lovely. Miso bobbles it there. With under 30 seconds left in the game, I, I presume that Pallet will just hold the ball and just run out the clock and take their 40 point victory tonight. And Lovely with the pass that time. Actual Lovely this time. And playing some extremely physical defense over there, Allegra Miso. As we have five seconds remaining in the period. And that will bring us to the end of regulation as the buzzer sounds. Final score of 64-24 as the Palo Alto Vikings women's team has dominated the Los Altos Eagles. As we get ready for the boys varsity game coming up just after this on MC Sports at 8 o'clock. Uh, we'll be joining you uh, for now, signing off, I'm Alex Ross along with Ben Mullen. I'll be talking to you again shortly, uh, just prior to the boys game. We hope you stick with us.